In this series, we will learn about how we can upgrade WebLogic Server 10G and 11G to 12C to 12.2.1.4 version. Okay, so there are different strategies that is uh, for the upgrade that is based on the which current version of WebLogic that you are using, either it is 10G, 11G, okay, and some prior versions of 12C as well. Okay, so based on the version, there are different strategies for the upgrade. Okay, and in this part one, we will see about all the strategies and the different paths for the upgrade to 12C, 12.2.1.4. Okay, and then in part two, we will see the execution of the upgrade of WebLogic Server 10.3.6 to 12.2.1.4. Now, these are the different versions of WebLogic Server. Okay, and there are different cases where, as I said, that is depend on which version of WebLogic that you are using. Okay, so if we consider the case one, so case one is if you are currently using a WebLogic version prior to WebLogic Server 10.3.1. Okay, that means if you are using any version like 10.3.0, 10.0, 9.2, 9.1, 9.2, etc. Okay, in that case, if you want to upgrade your WebLogic 12.2.1.4, then there is a two stage process. The first, you have to upgrade your WebLogic to 10.3.6 version. Okay, and once it is upgraded to 10.3.6, then you can upgrade it to 12.2.1.4.0 version. Okay. Now, case two, if you are upgrading from 10.3x version to 12.2.1.4, so 10.3x version means from 10.3.1, 10.3.2, 10.3.3, 10.3.4, and 10.3.5, and 10.3.6. Six. So if you are upgrading from any of the 10.3x version to 12.2.1.4, then there would be a different path for that. Case 3, if you are upgrading from 10.1x onward version, okay, that means 12.1.1, 12.1.2, and 12.1.3 to 12.2.1.4, okay. And the case 4, if you are upgrading from 12.2.1x version, okay, that means 12.2.1.0, 12.2.1.1, 12.2.1.2, 12.2.1.3. Okay, then there would, there would be a different path for that one. Okay, so now we will see that if we are on case one, in on case two, or case three, or case four, then how we can follow the upgrade path for WebLogic to tell two one four. Now, words of wisdom. So there are some certain standard steps that you need to execute, irrespective of uh, your WebLogic server uh, server version that you are going to upgrade. Okay, but yes, depend on the WebLogic server version, that could be different. For example. If I said you are going to upgrade your WebLogic, that means you are going to upgrade your binaries, right? So in that case, the first one is you have to upgrade your binaries. So that means you can upgrade with upgrade installer or you can install binaries, new binaries and new binaries either in the same Oracle home or could be in a different Oracle home. So all three cases are differ according to which exact version of WebLogic that you are using that we will see in the next few slides okay and second once you are done with the upgrade of your binaries you have to reconfigure your domain okay and it may not be required based on the current version of WebLogic that you are using and the third step you have to configure configuration of your node manager or you can say it is a migration of your node manager and it may not be required based on the WebLogic server that you are using so all together, you can see that when you are going for the upgrade of your WebLogic, you have to follow three steps or maybe only two steps. First is you have to upgrade your binaries. Okay. And for that, you may get an upgrade installer from the Oracle, or maybe you have to install the new binaries in the new Oracle home, or maybe you are required to install the binaries, new binaries in the same Oracle home. Once it is done, you have to reconfigure your domain. It may not be required based on your version. And the third one is your node manager configuration, or you can say your node manager migration, which again may not be required based on the WebLogic version. So let us see all the cases. So upgrade path for case one. So case one, if you are using WebLogic version prior to WebLogic server 10.3.1, that means if you are on WebLogic server 10.3.0, 10.0, 9.2, 9.1, etc. Okay, then you have to first upgrade to your WebLogic to 10.3.6, as I have explained in my previous slides okay so for upgrading your any of your WebLogic server versions prior to 10.3.1 versions you will get a upgrade installer okay so just like a fresh installer you will get a upgrade installer you have to download that and once you will run that one it will it will prompt you for to provide the existing oracle home directory okay so that you have to provide your existing oracle home directory and once you will provide that one then after that, it will upgrade your installer, or you can say you it will upgrade your WebLogic server to current 10.3.6 version. 
Okay. So once your binaries are upgraded with the help of upgrade installer, you have to run the domain upgrade wizard. Okay. With, from the 1036 domain, right? So because now your uh, binaries are upgraded to 1036. Okay. Then inside 1036 directory, you will get a domain upgrade wizard and then you could run that one. Once you will run that, it will prompt you for the provide the location of your domain. And once you will provide the location of your domain, it will upgrade your domain as well. So, 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 upg so upgrading from any of the prior versions of 10.3.1 version, there are two steps. First, you have to upgrade your WebLogic to 10.3.6 with the help of upgrade installer. Once it is done, you have to upgrade your domain with the help of upgrade domain wizards. So this is the case one where we have upgraded our WebLogic server to 10.3.6. Now we have to upgrade it to 12.2.1.4 version. Okay. So this will cover in the next case two. Okay. Because in the case two, we are going to upgrade from 10.3.6 version. And in case one, we have first upgraded our WebLogic to 10.3.6. Right. So that means case two will be applicable for case one as well now because we are on the 10.3.6 in the case one as well. Right. So case two is when we are upgrading from any of the 10.3x version. That means if you're upgrading your web logic from 10.3.1, 10.3.2, 10.3.3, 10.3.4, 10.3.5, or 10.3.6 version, okay, then the upgrade path would be you have to install your latest JDK version, supported certified uh, JDK version, okay, 1.8. And once it is done, you have to install your web logic server 12 to 14 binaries in new Oracle home. Okay, so for upgrading from 10.3x versions, that means 10.3.1 to 10.3.6, you will not get any upgrade installer. You have to install your Oracle, install your WebLogic in new Oracle home, right? So once your WebLogic is installed in new Oracle home, you have to reconfigure your domain. So that means again, you will, once your WebLogic server 12.2.1.4 is installed, then you will go inside the installation directory of 12.2.1.4 and then you will initiate the reconfiguration wizard. And once you will initiate the reconfiguration wizard, it will prompt you for the domain directory. In that case, you have to provide the domain directory of 10.3.6 or the older whatever the web, uh, WebLogic button that you are using. Okay, so once you will provide the location of the domain, it will it will ask you for certain steps and then it will upgrade your domain to 10, 12 to 1, 4. So what it will do, it, it, it will does, it will it will upgrade your domain to 12 to 1, 4 and it will rewire it to the new binaries of 12 to 1, 4. Okay, and then the third step, you have to reconfigure your node manager. Okay, so reconfigure of your node manager is that you can say about the node manager migration option. Okay, and that option you will get once you will run the reconfiguration of your domain. Now, why node manager configuration is required? Let us understand in the next slide. Okay, so now prior to WebLogic Server 12.1.2. So prior to 12.1.2, that means 12.1.1, 12.3.6, 12.1.2. 10.3.6, uh, 10.3.5, 10.3.4, 10.3.3, and so so old versions. Okay. A default node manager configurations was provided by WebLogic server using a default startup script and a default node manager home location. Okay. And by default, any new domain that were created on that machine were associated with the node manager in the default node manager location. This is commonly referred as per host node manager. So this is an important term per host node manager. So prior to 12 to 1 versions, all the WebLogic server versions were provided with a per host node manager. That means when you installed any WebLogic server in any host or any machine, okay, then there would be only one node manager in that particular machine. So irrespective of the number of domains that you have created in that machine, that is irrespective of the number of installations and you have done in that machine, all of your installations, all of your domains, would have been using only one node manager. Okay, that means all your domain in a particular machine were associated with only one node manager. There were certain drawbacks of that one, like if you are going to uh, to upgrade any of your uh, domain which contain your node manager, then if you are going to stop your node manager, then your functionality will break for other domains as well, right? So <clears throat> to overcome that one, starting from 12.1.2 onwards, a node manager default configuration, which called as a per domain node manager manager configuration was introduced. That means after the 12.1.2 versions or maybe from the 12.1.2 versions, okay, per domain node manager configuration was provided. That means for each domain, there would be a separate node manager. Okay, that means if you have a two domain in a particular machine or maybe three or four domain in a particular machine, that means your node manager account will be same. If it is a two domain, then you will have a two node manager. If you have four domain, that means you will get a four node manager. That means each domain will have their own 
node manager configurations. And this is the node manager configuration is specific to a given domain. So this configuration allow multiple domains on a given machine to have different node manager configurations. That means each domain will have own node manager and that will be from 12.1.2 onwards. Okay, now hence, we follow node manager migration option during reconfiguration domain if you are upgrading from 12.1.1 or any prior versions, right? Because in the prior versions, it was a per host node manager and after 12.1.1, it is per domain node manager, right? So you have to, once you are upgrading your older old domains, you have to upgrade your node manager as well from per host node manager to your per domain node manager. So once you will run the reconfiguration of your wizard after the, uh, after the installation of new binaries, okay, there you will get an option in the node manager screen, migration. So you have to select the option migration. So once you will select the migration and once your reconfiguration is completed, it will automatically migrate all of your configurations to your default per domain based node manager. After that, you can go inside your domain and then node manager directory. And then from there, you will see all the configuration files. And then if you want to start or stop your node manager, then you can start stop from the domain bin directory as we start in our 12.2.1.4 or 12.2.1.3 or 12.2.1.2 versions. And this is the reason you have to select the migration option of your node manager when you are configuring your domain prior to 12.1.2 versions of WebLogic. Okay, and it is not required if you're upgrading from 12.1.2 and later version because after 12.1.2 uh, or, or from the 12.1.2 versions, uh, we have now the per host domain manager. So if you're upgrading your WebLogic from 12.1.2 onwards, okay, then you will not get any option for the migration of your node manager because that is automatically per domain based. Now upgrade path for case three and four. So if you are upgrading from 12.1.1, x version or 12.2.1x version, okay, in that case, you have to first install your JDK, current JDK or certified JDK. Then you have to install your 12.2.1.4 in new Oracle home. And then you have to run your reconfiguration domain. It's just like the previous case two as well, right? But only difference is that here you don't need to reconfigure your domain. That means once you, once you will run the reconfiguration domain, you will not get the node manager migration option because your node manager is already, already a per host based node manager. Right. And on top of that, there is another way as well. So if you are upgrading from version 12 to 11 and later to version 12 to 14, okay, that means if you are upgrading from 12 to 11, 12 to 12, or 12 to 13 to 12 to 14, then reconfiguration wizard only need to be run when the location of the JDK or the Oracle home is changed as part of the upgrade. What does it mean that the reconfiguration wizard only needs to be run? when the location of JDK or Oracle Home is changed as part of the upgrade, okay? So if you're upgrading and you have, if you have installed your JDK and your Oracle or, or uh, WebLogic server in new Oracle Home or JDK in new JDK Home, then you have to upgrade, you have to run the reconfiguration wizard, okay? Because once you will run the reconfiguration wizard, it will rewire your domain with the new path of your JDK or with the new part of your Oracle Home. Okay, but if you have installed your latest JDK and the latest your uh, WebLogic server in the same Java home or in the same Oracle home, then reconfiguration wizard is not required. That means if you have installed your, your current JDK is inside here, like suppose OPT slash Java, okay, and your current Oracle home is OPT slash middleware, okay. So when you're going for an upgrade, you can take the backup of your existing uh, Java and take the backup of your existing middleware directory. Okay. And once the backup is done, you, you reinstall the new Java and you reinstall the new Oracle, uh, WebLogic in the same Oracle home. So in that case, you don't need to run the reconfiguration wizard. That's it. Okay. And now note additional step if upgrading from 12.1.1 only. Okay. So as I explained in my previous slide, if you're upgrading from any of the older version of 12.1.1, then you will get an option for the migration of your node manager as well. Okay. So now to conclude, our objective is to upgrade to 12.2.1.4. And if you're upgrading from any version prior to 10.3.1, okay, then you have to first upgrade to 10.3.6. And for that, you will get an upgrade installer and then you will run the reconfiguration of your domain. And inside that, you will get an option to migrate your node manager as well. And after that, once it is done, you have to upgrade to 12.214. So this is a two-stage process.
Okay. And if you are upgrading from any of the version from 10.3.1 to 12.2.1.3 to 12.2.1.4, you have to install the logic in New Oracle Home. And then you have to run the reconfiguration wizard. Okay. And node manager steps only required if you are upgrading from 12.1.1 and prior versions. And third is if you are upgrading from version 12.2.1.1 to 12.2.1.4 auditor versions to then, your reconfiguration wizard only need to be done if you are changing your JDK home, you can say Java home, or if you are changing your Oracle home. If you are not changing your JDK home, or if you are not changing your Oracle home, that means if you are installing the latest JDK in the same Java home, if you are installing your latest uh, web logic in the same Oracle home, okay, in that case, you don't need to run the reconfiguration wizard. Now, this is all about the upgrade. And then when we talk about the applications, okay, those are deployed in your web logic server. So it is not necessary for web logic server applications to be undeployed before upgrading the domain. In most cases, web logic server applications can be run without modifications in new web logic server application domain of 122140. So that means in most of the cases, you don't need to, you know, to undeploy your applications or you don't need to change any kind of a, uh, you, you don't need to do any kind of a modifications. For your applications okay it will automatically convert to the latest version of your web logic okay but yes maybe sometimes if you are using certain customized applications then you may need to be undeploy that one and once your upgrade is completed then you can redeploy them okay and apart from that one because now in 12 to 140 there are a lot of functionalities that has been incorporated and some of the functionalities may have been depreciated and if you're any of your existing applications using the depreciated features, which will not be in 12.2.1.4.0, that may impact the functionality of your applications. Okay. And for that one, when you are going for an upgrade, you have to ask your development team to thoroughly go through the compatibility and with the release guide of 12.2.1.4.0 to understand all the new features that have been included in your web logic server 12.2.1.4 and all the features that has been depreciated from the 12.2.1.4.0 so that they can make sure that their application would not be impacted after the upgrades. Okay, so if you use depreciated or removed APIs in your application, you might encounter warning or exceptions at runtime because the, fun if the, if the functionalities are depreciated and if your applications are using that one, then apart from your application features will get impacted, you may see a lot of warnings and exceptions in the logs as well. So as a best practice, when you are going for an upgrade, share the release document of your 12.2.1.4.0 with the development team and ask them, go through it thoroughly to understand all the depreciated step uh, features to make sure that your applications are not using those features so that it should not impact your environments. That's all about the upgrade path of your web logic server and then about the applications. And shortly I will come with a part two as well, in which I will show you the upgrade from 10.3.6 to 12.2.1.4.0. Thanks for watching this video and stay tuned.